So today guys, I'm going to be showing you how to mod your Nitrado server for Armor Reforger. This is going to include how to change the scenario and the map on there as well for modded scenarios. This is just the easiest way that I have figured out to do it. So if you have a better way to do it, please let me know in the comment section, post your video links and all that stuff. I want to know. I'm always down to learn tips and tricks. But this is what has been working for me and this is what I'm going to show you guys today. So of course, huge shout out to Armor Forger and Nitrado for making this possible. And everybody that puts up the mods in the workshop will be seeing some of them there in this video. But shout out to all you guys. You're awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. Okay, so first off, what you're going to want to do is get your Nitrado server up obviously i'm going to take you to the dashboard here real quick so this is just a dash near Toronto dashboard pretty basic stuff cpu usage your players and stuff like that this stuff works sometimes for player counts sometimes it doesn't a little unreliable don't just recommend checking it or using another something else to keep track of your server pop um this dashboard is not really in super important for you what's really we're going to be sticking with mostly today is in your settings for your general settings and your config files those are going to be two very important things so first i'm just going to take it really quickly through the general settings which is speaks for itself general settings server name so i got my name junior ninja gaming hashtag gng is there is a limit to how long it can be so you want to keep it simple something easy to find to make sure everything's spelled right you can add a server password if you want to of course your admin password here's the important one right here this is all your scenarios and maps. So these are your official scenarios, vanilla scenarios that come with the game, training, combat ops, all this stuff with the maps and stuff like that. Down here, you'll see modern modded scenarios, and you'll notice that there's nothing there yet. We are going to get to that in a bit. I just reinstalled the server this morning to change the map and start from scratch. So this is just bare bones. Nothing's been added yet. You can see that button down here. So next, of course, well, I guess before that, view distances, network view distances, your grass distances, and stuff like that. You can all set so that way it goes across your server. And then always make sure that you don't forget to hit save changes when you change this stuff. Very, very important. So next, we're going to come to the config file section. So this, you'll notice it looks very similar to the general file section, but this is just everything actually loaded in to it so you'll see notice the name of the server password scenario so this one is important scenario here on line eight campaign config i can't remember what i had it set to so right now it's just set to conflict ever on so that's boom right there and then of course you'll have everything else here disable third person bottle eye and you come down to this line here and you'll see mods and you'll see these two little brackets here those are important. We're going to come back to that later. But then, of course, cross-platform, true, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so for right now, right now we want to add a modded scenario. This is not an official map, nothing like that. So I had to look it up onto the workshop. I'm going to be adding Worthy Island to my server today. So right now there's only two scenarios for that, and that is Worthy Island Game Master Mode and Worthy Island Conflict. Both are put on by Chewy. Shout out Chewy. This looks awesome. I can't wait to try it out on my server. So right here, down in the bottom here, you're going to see the scenario IDs. So you need to add that in order to be able to set this as your map on your Nitrado server. So you'll see your scenario right here. You'll notice this bracket. And then it goes all the way to these quotation marks. So it's the exact same as it is right here from that bracket and then stops right before the quotation marks. So all we gotta do is copy that, sit here, very carefully, you gotta watch where you place stuff on this sometimes. That can be the difference between you messing it up and it working and it not. So right now, and we just sit there, Ooh, click that, select that right, and we're just gonna go right to the, right at before those quotation marks in this bracket. And then we're just gonna go Control V. And boom, where the island config has just been added. Now you're going to want to sit there, make sure you hit save those changes so your config is saved successfully, and we're going to load the file. The file should be loaded. Now, if I come over to the general settings, I should, yep, it's already selected. Now you'll see down here in your modded scenarios, unknown where the island GM has been selected. So then we're going to want to sit there and we're going to save those settings right away easy now of course you actually have to add the map file and whatever other mods you are using in your server so that's where this becomes important here 
You'll notice earlier I said you got to pay attention to these two little brackets here. That's where we're going to be adding all of our JSON files from Armor or Forger to actually mod this. So I'm just going to take this over here and I'm going to drag all that over. So we're going to go through the mods here really quick before we get into how to find all that. So you can come over here to your mod manager and you can see I have 40 mods installed right now. These are all ones that are going to be going on my server. There are now no factions except for the Taliban faction reskin for the Freedom Fighters. So all of these are going to be going in mine. You'll actually see the Worthy Island mod itself down here. You have to make sure that is in there. Very important if you want it to actually work. Make sure that you have any dependencies that are required of it too. So this one, luckily for me, doesn't have any dependencies. But you'll notice that some of these do have dependencies like... Uh, let me pick one here real quick. Uh, Brett 50 Cal has one dependency. has this RS... RIS laser attachments. Always make sure that you have your dependencies enabled in this as well before you start trying to mod your server. Make sure that everything works. Try it on single player mode. All you need to do is enable these mods, select the scenario, which the scenario is in game, and you can try them single player by yourself to make sure everything works really easily. Really simple. So if you come up to here and you click on your mod marker up here, and you come over to here and you go to your JSON file, you notice that this goes bracket all the way down to bracket. And there's an option for you to here to copy to clipboard. So if I copy this to clipboard, I always select it a couple times because I'm always paranoid that it's not going to work. And you come down here and you just select in between those two brackets, control V, and it's going to add all of this. Now, the last time I had this set up for my server, I had this bracket down here by itself. And I had this one, oh, on one by itself, if I'm remembering correctly. This might not work. I might just be messing this right up. I don't know but I'm pretty sure that's how I had it last time. So with all of those mods, as long as I'm pretty sure as long as they're added between these two brackets, you might need that space, you might not, I can't remember, but we're gonna leave it like that for right now because that's how I had it before. So once you have all those mods added, you're just gonna go save changes. And then always make sure after you save the changes, you load this file. Now, you should be able to just start your server, wait for everything to install, and then it should pop right up with all your mods on there and you should just be able to run it. I know it's simple that she feels like that you should have an extra step in there, but the last couple times I've done this, this is all I've had to do to make them work. Obviously, sometimes some mods don't like to work with others. Sometimes you're going through them. You're trying to figure out what works with what. Sometimes it's conflicting mods. Uh, some of the creators are really cool and if you tell them about it, they will fix it. And next time you go to try it, They'll just work. And other times they won't. They'll never work together. It is what it is. They just conflict. So you'll notice up there, it just said a new update is now being installed. That is because I reinstalled it earlier for just vanilla. Now it's installing the new map and all the mods to the server. Now, after it comes up, it'll say, so see right there, it says that this is ready. So if you'll come back to the general, you remember I had my name, Ginger Ninja Gaming, hashtag GNG. Don't panic. If you go to look for your server and it doesn't show up right away, sometimes it takes a couple minutes to actually show up on the game list. So if I just type in hashtag GNG, my server should come up here in the next little bit. Sometimes it takes five, 10 minutes. Sometimes if it doesn't show up after 20 minutes, double check that you're searching the right thing. And then you might have to go back and try to mess with some of the mods. You might have to type remove some and slowly start adding some on until you make it work. Because sometimes I've had it happen before where you just, some of the mods just will not work together and it will just make your server crash and it won't even show up. And if it does show up, you'll sign in, you'll get kicked right away and you'll be sitting there banging your head off your desk trying to figure out why it's not working. But sometimes the best bet for you to do is just add one mod at a time and then that way you can kind of pinpoint where the stuff's going wrong. It can be very time consuming, but 
it is one of the best and safest ways to do it. I'm just going to come back here and we're just going to type in ginger. Still not showing up. Should be up. See, and now this is making me worried because I'm not being able to find it, but. Uh, uh, uh. Let's not panic for a second. Let's just give it a minute. Everything appears to be running okay on my dashboard. So that's one of the things you can check. Of course, is you can check to make sure that everything's running as it's supposed to be. There's life in it. There, it is running. We can check our event log. Server restarted. Yep. So it's looking like everything should be good. Let's try this again. Oops. Yep. And of course, okay, so I'm going to go back here just so then it should be able to come over here and type in hashtag G and G and search it up. And of course, don't panic if it doesn't come up right away. As you can see, it just took mine a couple minutes to sh show up. I panicked for a minute and it didn't pop up right away. It does take a couple minutes for it to upload and get to the server, but then you should just be able to start it up. And boom, mods are installed. Everything's a go. The map is working. And we should have no issues. And just like that, it's working. And that's how to easily mod and add scenarios to your Nitrado server. Once again, huge shout out Nitrado and to Arma Reforger. The, you guys are awesome. Great games, great servers. Nitrado, very easy to use servers. Highly recommend it and if you're not doing anything too crazy like I am. And of course, folks, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to check out all of our socials that are listed here. Links on the channel page, Ginger Ninja Gaming, live on YouTube, Facebook, and Tik and Twitch, posting to YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and always hanging out in our Discord server. Like, follow, share, subscribe today. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and share.